let's take a look at why we're talking about e-commerce today. So it really won't be a surprise to anybody that the way we buy things today is changing. Previously, a consumer might enter a store, find a product they knew, or if they didn't know the product, they may read the packaging to get more information and make a decision about whether or not to buy it. We know that today that process is much more complex. So as consumers, we do things like read reviews online or we may um, check out blog posts, engage in discussion about products on social media. And so an experience that was really once single channel, so a buyer walks into a store, we saw that start to evolve into a much more multi-channel experience. So maybe the buyer would buy it online or in a store or via the phone, but the experience was, were still very um, siloed. And now we're seeing a move to something that is much more omni-channel, which for the customer really means an experience that feels seamless across all of the different channels. And for retailers or manufacturers, what that means is an opportunity to really understand the customer and the path that the customer takes when making a purchase much more holistically. And so in many ways, e-commerce and digitalization has made much of this possible and has really started to necessitate that manufacturers and retailers adapt to this new climate. Another reason we're talking about e-commerce today is that while e-commerce may not be the largest proportion of some large packaged goods companies' business, uh, we are continuing to see pretty rapid growth in that space. This report that you see here is from Nielsen, and it was from 2016, and it shows that um, e-commerce sales, and that's the darker blue uh, portion of the bar chart there, is really what's driving the growth in a number of key consumer categories. The light blue on this chart shows your traditional brick and mortar growth, or for some categories such as beauty, the decline there. And so you can really see the proportion of the growth that's being driven by some of these new means of uh, purchasing goods. And Forrester is projecting that uh, in 2017, we'll end the year uh, with about 13% of US retail sales being done online, and predicts that by 2020, almost 17% of those sales will be done online. So the rapid growth in this space is really causing many organizations to have a second look at their e-commerce strategies and really hone in on this area to consider how they can compete. And another reason is that um, for anybody who has been watching the news this year, we all know that the established leaders in this space are really being challenged. And those challenges have come in the way of um, activist investors pushing for greater profitability predominantly through cost reduction. So you may be asking, how does you know, e-commerce play into this? Well, if you think about the old brick and mortar world, there was always a limit on the number of competitors that a product could be up against. In that world, shelf space is a very tangible thing, so something that is finite and can be sold at a premium. And because of that, major changes across market share in any one particular category would typically happen over long periods of time and often re require pretty deep advertising spend to be able to create or build brand loyalty. But in this new digital world, similar constraints really don't apply. When you think about the digital shelf, physical space is really no longer an object, and it's really allowing smaller brands uh, to come into the market. A lot of those brands are seeing that they're not prohibited from competing by some of the traditional hurdles and barriers of getting into a physical retailer. If you think about a company like uh, Dollar Shave Club, for example, which has now been acquired by Unilever, it's really a good example of a company who's thrived as a result of that low barrier to entry and more cost-effective ways of building a brand. So because building a brand has always been a very costly endeavor for many established leaders in the space, it's been an obvious place for companies to look when being pushed to achieve higher profitability through cost reduction. So we see a lot of organizations considering how can they cut back on some of that advertising spend. What we're seeing made possible by e-commerce, social media, and other digital avenues is really causing many companies to reconsider how they operate. And so in this type of climate, the answers to questions pertaining to e-commerce really become ever more valuable. When you start to ask yourself things like, how fast are sales growing through e-commerce channels? And what sort of impact do those sales have on my traditional brick and mortar sales? Some of these questions become very, very pertinent to understanding how organizations can play successfully within this space. 